Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Monday's edition of Ruzel Education Live. We hope you had a great weekend. Today I have a special treat for you. We have Mr. Dave Hardy. Dave, how you doing out there, bud? I'm good. I hope everybody else is doing good too. Today you looking good. We are going... Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um so today I just want to go over um, one of my uh, most fun haircuts. Uh, I'm going to be going over the scumbag boogie. So the reason that's one of my most fun haircuts is because it's a little bit more edgy. We're going to go ahead and put a hard part in with a razor line. Um, we're not going to do any razor fades today, but we are going to take them in tight around the ears and keep everything pretty much where as we do with classic haircuts at Ruzel. So as you can see, I have everything parted off. This is our sectioning we're going to be doing today. We have four triangle sections up top. And then from the front and around the crown, we follow his natural shape of his head from his parietal around to his occipital. I'll spin that around so everybody can see. Awesome. So you can get your camera usually in the barbershop finger away. I don't. There we go. So lost my spot. So how I'm gonna start this haircut. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. So in the barbershop, I usually don't put a whole bunch of clips in a man's hair. One, I work in a salon, own a salon, but we have a barbershop in a separate room. Guys like to keep their masculinity around the females. So I try to not to use clips during our uh, service, but for our mannequin here and for sakes of teaching you all, I'm going to keep that parting for you to see throughout the whole haircut. But wet everything down with a little bit of water and hair tonic. Ruzel hair tonic is going to break down any previous product, clean the scalp, and smells oh so well. In my last video, which was very, very sketchy, which I apologize for that. I mentioned that the smell of these products sell the product. Hair tonic is one of the first products that are introduced in my service. And it's probably one of the most traditional smells of a barbershop. So it brings in the conversation of what am I using in their hair? Let's pause on the product and talk about what I'm about to do here. First, I'm keeping my comb. 90 degrees, hair is pulled straight out. I'm not angled in because I'm not trying to make a wedge and I'm not angling forward because I want the hair underneath shorter than the hair up top. Okay, so we're gonna pull it straight out. I'm gonna establish my length. Now this length is determined by your creative genius. Um, I like to keep the mannequin hair at least half an inch to an inch and a half long um on a normal person it really depends on their texture lighter textures keep it a little longer thicker textures you can take it in a little tighter but our first cut here it's going to be 90 degrees right above the ear i'm not going to start in the front here because i want to keep length for our styling later so our first cut here 90 degrees straight across okay i'm going to brush that down and i'm going to move forward when I move forward, you can see the guide is back here. I'm just going to keep going straight. I'm not going to follow the shape of his head quite yet. All right. Now I'm going to start moving to the back. When I move to the back, now I follow parallel with my first baseline parting. Following the natural curvature of his head. 
that is going to be the best way to keep your client an easy styling technique at home for themselves. If your client or patron cannot style or redo what you did in the barbershop for them, they're not really going to be happy with it. So we're going to try to make this haircut as easy styling for him. And the way to do that is keeping the natural shape. So I'm going to follow all the way past halfway, past his occipital, so that when I come back on the other side, I have less work to do and we meet in the middle. Okay, so now you can see I have a nice baseline to follow throughout my whole haircut. This baseline is a guideline. It's guiding me all the way down the head and then it's guiding me to bring that long hair to the baseline. That way we don't have too much of an undercut or disconnection. All right, when I move down his head, I can either go straight down or now I can start tapering. But I'm going to keep it a little longer, a little darker, and we'll taper out his edges. Now I'm staying square. By following square, the hair squared down his head, the natural shape of his head will give a natural taper because we start at the parietal and move down his head. And what is the parietal? It's a bulge or a bone sticking out the side. So if we follow it straight down, the natural curvature of his head will taper it naturally. There's not anything special to going straight down the head, but besides his natural shape, giving that natural look. Now these sideburns, I'm going to tape it in a little bit. Let's get all this long hair out of the way. Awesome. Now following around to the back. Now another thing that the hair tonic that I originally put in his hair is doing it's giving me something to grab onto with the hair. It's making it a little easier to comb through his head. I'm going to move him up so I stay nice and square. I stay comfortable. I'm not hurting myself. Now, as I'm moving down his head behind his nape area. From the occipital down to his nape starts to really dig in or round in. So I am going to go nice and tight. So now I can start angling my comb in towards his hairline a little bit more. I see we just got a big influx of viewers. I want to welcome everybody to Ruzel Facebook Live today. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them in the comments and I'll make sure I get Dave to answer your questions today. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. I love when questions are asked because I'm not always sure what you guys really want to learn. So I'm just telling you or educating you on the things I've learned over my 17 years of a career. And I'm not saying that my way of cutting is the best. I'm not saying Ruzel's way of cutting is the best. But what I like about educating with Ruzel is there's a structure. There's a structure with education. There's a routine in the structure. For me, a routine helps me get through my day. If I have a nice routine that I can follow and I know that routine in and out, I know I can take shortcuts and I know how to time each client appropriately. And in our business, time is money. All right. So now, if you look at his head straight on here, we have a nice square shape. Okay. 
So when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the silhouette. How square is that to his head? I'm not really worried about his fade because we're not doing too much of a fade today. Okay. Another trick that works for me in the barbershop is I'm always looking in the mirror. Okay. That is also giving me another perspective of his haircut. Okay. I know for me, sometimes I do a great haircut, which I think, and then uh, I take a picture of it and it looks totally different. So by looking in a mirror, it gives you that picture look almost. Okay. So now I'm moving to the other side of the head. You can see first side, we did baseline around to the occipital bone. We stopped just after halfway. We have a nice square shape. Now on the opposite side, this is my strong side. I always leave the strong side to the end so I can really focus on my, my weaker side almost. I am right-handed, so lefties would have been a little stronger on that side. So repeat of what we did. We pulled all the hair straight up, 90 degrees. My comb is straight up and down from the floor. I am about an inch inch and a half, if you will. My clipper is all the way closed for most tension. And I am cutting straight forward, okay? I'm establishing a guide. When I move forward, I'm staying straight and not following his shape of his head. I wanna keep a little bit of length in the front of that baseline for styling towards the end. When I move towards the back, I'm following the shape of his head and parallel with my baseline parting. Some clients may have to leave the crown area a little bit longer, depending on how their cowlick or swirl acts. Okay. For our mannequin, we kind of can put the swirl or cowlick anywhere. So we're going to imagine it's naturally up in here somewhere and our crown triangle. So when I move to the back, I'm going to stand straight in front of it and I'm going to meet in the middle here. Almost putting what some would say a heavy weight line right on the occipital bone, but we want that weight line. That weight line is filling in the square parts of our head, our top, tri our top little corners here. Everybody's head is round, and we're trying to establish certain shapes. For instance, this haircut is more square shaped, so we have to fill in the corners that are rounded off. And that's what we're doing by keeping a heavy weight line around his head. That weight line will be depleted once we get into the finishing touches of the haircut. Now you can see the baseline is around the natural shape of his head. Okay, and I'm just gonna finish taking up this bulk, still establishing a square shape, not really tapering too much except for the sideburns. If you wanted to, you could come in diagonally, okay? And sometimes I feel when I go diagonally, I always taper. So for this haircut, I wanna keep it nice and square. Get off these sideburns. We will fade these sideburns out once I blow dry everything and we get a nice style on them. I like to do a lot of my fading on dry hair. That way we can see all the imperfections and we all know that hair shrinks a little bit once it dries. So I can really see the shape and blending once it's dried. Okay, at this position, when we're doing the back, we want to have our client tip forward a little bit. Not too much because then it becomes unnatural. But just a little bit. I like to tell people just get to a comfortable position where they're ready to fall asleep. If they're too, too uncomfortable and bent over with their chin in their chest, they're going to be uncomfortable and bouncing around and you don't want that in a haircut. All right. So 
for those of you just joining, the only product I have in this hair so far is Musil Hair Tonic. It is breaking down any oils that I previously had in the hair before the service, helping me with timing so that I don't have to shampoo before a service. It's starting my conversation with what products are you using in my hair. It smells so good. The smell sells. Okay. Awesome. So now we have established a nice square baseline haircut. Now we're going square, straight down, nice even haircut. All clipper over comb. We didn't use any guards. Not saying anything is wrong with guards. Guards are great, used them my whole career. But I can use a guard, you can use a guard, everybody can use a guard. So my uh, my town's pretty, pretty competitive. We have, uh, I'm just gonna go over this, touch it up, just to make sure we're matching on each side. What's wrong with going back over it? Nothing. You can keep taking more off, but you can't put it back on. So in my town, it is a little competitive. So if I'm doing a four down to a two, that person can't get in with me, but now he can go to the next person and the next person down the street, and they can all do a four down to a two. But if I'm putting a comb and a clipper on his head, and I'm establishing my length, he really can't go to the next person and said, hey, he did clipper over comb, you figure it out. You know, so it kind of helps you keeping people in your chair as well. All right, so we got all the bulk off the sides and back. We will be tapering sideburns in the back, but once we have a dry head. So now we are going to move into transitioning to the top. This is very simplified with the baseline parting technique. Okay, everything is going to be blended straight to our baseline here, okay? Our front triangle is gonna be a little disconnect to the front, but it is blended here at the baseline, okay? Our scumbag boogie for what we're doing today. I love it on curly textured hair. I love it on straight hair. It works for really anybody, okay? Um, so we're going to do a little pompous look to the side here, almost like a side part, but we're gonna do it really, really, Razor lined in there nice and tight. Okay, so how we're going to start. Dave, can I interrupt you for a second? Yes, you may, sir. We had a champion in our, our mix. Miss Stephanie, Miss Stephanie Bucky won uh, a Barbarella last night. She says, hi, Dave. I just want to give her a shout out while we're in the middle here. Absolutely. Great job last night, Stephanie. Congratulations to Steph. Yeah, absolutely. That's my teammate right there. Right, she did a wonderful <laughs> job. Fabulous haircut, by the way. Go over and check out Barbarella America. Barbarella America. All right, so now we have all this weight back here, all this long hair hanging over, okay? Kind of looks like an undercut that people don't know how to style back here. We're gonna blend it right here to our baseline. Now, this is a lot of hair. So we're going to bring everything over, but then we're going to do comb sections diagonally back. The smaller the section, the more precise your haircut. Okay, so we're going to go down to where we can see. If it's too much hair and you can't see your baseline or your guideline, you're going to be lost, and we don't want to be lost. So I can see my baseline parting underneath, pull everything straight down to it. My baseline is still square and I'm just gonna cut straight down, okay? Pull that down, see how it blends real nice to our baseline, okay? Once I start moving into the back triangle of the head, I'm going to start maneuvering my hands more vertical so that I automatically take out the weight that sits on top of the occipital, all while blending it real nice and naturally. Take a couple more comb sections. 
we're going to work these small comb sections until all of this hair is pulled to the baseline. Find your guide and pull back. And straight up and down. Well, that was noisy. All right, small comb section, speed this up a little bit. Find your guide and repeat the same thing. So I'm gonna be using a few other products in his hair today. When I go ahead and style for my pre-blow dry serum, I'll say for the cosmetologists out there, I'm going to be using a surf tonic. The surf tonic is gonna give a nice little grit, like he had uh, beachy textury hair. You know, our, our scumbag boogie is gonna be pretty textured today. Um, and then for our styling, we're gonna we'll use one of our, our newer products, our Rizzle Styling Paste. It's not a super strong hold, but we want something a little bit more lived in. So it's great for that occasion. Okay, pulling everything over. See if we have any hair that reaches. And it does. There goes the comb. And you can see our guideline underneath. We're just going to keep following that. Now we repeat the same thing on the other side. Now, once we get into the area where his side part will be, that is when this is the only haircut, I will force that parting to stay down here instead of coming up with the rest. Okay, when we get there, we'll talk more about it. I don't know about you guys, I'm ready to go back to the shop. I'm in Pennsylvania. We really don't know when we're going back as of now. I'm working like middle of June. So cutting these mannequins has been my lifeline. Keeping me sane. Awesome. Another comb section. And you know, it, it seems repetitive, but repetition means practice. And with practice comes perfection. And no, not everybody's perfect. And no, I don't give a hair perfect haircut every single time. Um, but I do try my, my darndest to, to really achieve a perfect haircut every time. Now, me personally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in the back here and lift it straight up and kind of relieve more weight now before I do it in the drying section. So I'm kind of pulling the hair out 90 degrees and just knocking off this corner here. Just knocking off that corner that wants to lay on top. Awesome. Now we can see that it took a lot of weight out here. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our next section. 
And we'll go over here because this is not the side that we'll be parting. So our first small triangle, this is going to be blended straight to our baseline underneath. Okay, but it is kind of thick and you can't see your guide underneath. So small comb section. Take your triangle, move it out the way, bring this guy straight to your baseline. Now we can see our baseline. Okay. The reason we keep that straight to the baseline is because when we brush this hair back, it blends it all together, okay? Now, one thing that I have really taken seriously when I started learning the Rusal way is leaving a little bit more hair on there, okay? Um, for me personally, I was always cutting the hair way too short, um, but I like short cuts. Um, but for most people, they always don't want a short haircut. So. One quote that really stuck with me is everybody has the perfect haircut hidden inside their hair. We just have to find it. And ever since I heard that, I've really taken that to a whole new perspective when I'm cutting hair, because now I try to focus on giving them my best haircut with what they have on them naturally. Everybody comes in with pictures of they want to be Brad Pitt or someone famous and you're looking at him like, dude, I cannot make you look like George Clooney. Can't make you look like Brad Pitt. But what you can do is give them the best haircut that they already have hidden in there and they will love you for it. So this side here, pulling it straight down to my baseline. That's a little thick, still can't see. So I'll pull a little bit more up. Straight down to my baseline, find it underneath, found it. And this one, I am going to start following the shape of his head a little bit on this side. This is the side we're going to be razor parting. Okay. Take another little section. Baseline and cut. I, uh, I cut in a college town and everybody always wants a hard part. So this is probably, besides the razor pompadour that is the most popular in my uh, barber shop, this is probably number two. Um, because it takes more of someone that really knows how they want to style their hair to go ahead and get a hard part or a razor part because they got to know that they're going to be coming in the barbershop a lot more often than the regular Joe that doesn't get it razored in. When razoring in a hard part, you're looking at probably a two week at max repeat uh, haircut because um, that's going to grow in and you're not going to see the hard part anymore. It's just going to be a couple sprouts sticking out of your head. So those customers, you're going to see a lot more and establish a great haircut with it. All right. So before I move into this next triangle, I want to spin them around for you guys so you can see the baseline and how everything is blended straight to the baseline. Okay, that is how we follow the baseline parting and blend everything from short hair to long hair. Awesome. This is the Very last nice, part. Dave. Now this front triangle, thank you, Curtis. This front triangle, um, like George said the other day, is what we call the fun hair. This is what everybody's playing with. This is what we're styling. Everything else is kind of boring. It's 
simple, it just lays there. Okay, so now we're working with the fun part where we get the style and this is where everything comes together and makes people look good. All right, so I'm going to focus on the side that's not gonna be parted. Okay, because I wanna blend all of that to my baseline and then take the weight out of the top and get a nice silhouette or nice shape, either triangle shape or more square shape. But we never wanna have where the crown is longer than the front, unless they're growing their hair out like I am currently. Okay, so remember when we said small sections. So I'm gonna take small sections diagonally back same as the triangle. Until all of this hair over here reaches over here. So now that I did that small triangle and everything's blended to the baseline, this top front triangle or front fringe, if you will, I'm going to angle down a little bit, over direct down a little bit. I wanna establish a nice long length in the front. That way we have hair that comes up and back. This hair will come up and back here, okay? And lay nice classic style, okay? Another comb section, straight over. And then repeat, pull down, follow your guide from beneath. Now, you can also point cut, nothing wrong with point cutting. Me personally, I like to get all my shapes in and then at the end, I do my texturing and my point cutting. His fringe was a little shorter, so I'm just going back over and making this over direction a little bit shorter. Up and back, and that's gonna look great there. And we're almost finished with the fun section, pulling everything over to the baseline. A little bit there, not much. So now that we have that side done, I'm gonna come over and double check that everything meets this side. Even though we're gonna have a razor part in this parting here, even though I'm gonna razor this parting, I still want this hair to be able to blend here, just in case he doesn't wanna come back in two weeks and get it redone, he can still pump his hair up and kind of hide that overgrown parting, okay? so just to make sure everything blends. Because I am a man of OCD and everything for me has to blend. Everything to the baseline. And remember we over direct the front triangle towards the front fringe area. Now me personally, when I'm cutting hair, I don't very talk too much in, in the barbershop. Um, unless the customer is talking to me and asking me questions and telling me about his weekend, I'm most likely talking about how his haircut worked for him last time. Also, what else am I talking about? I'm talking about how the product that I sold you worked out for. If I'm not focusing on the care of my client's hair during his appointment, it doesn't show that I care and I don't want him to be able to do his hair the same way I do it. I want him to be able to do that. I want him to come spend more money in my shop. All right, so as you can see, let me grab this little guy here. Okay, as you can see, we have a nice shape, but we still got all this weight back here, okay? So now we're gonna take all this hair in the middle, this triangle section. 
and we're going to find the front. Here's our front guide. Here's our back guide. Now we have to make the two meet. Looks to me like it's going to be a little bit more square rather than a triangle ramp almost. Okay. Pull the hair straight up. Okay. Straight up mohawk section. And straight into the crown that was already cut. So now we have our guide in the back. And then brush everything where it's going to live just to make sure we're okay. I'm going to do that two more times. Once pulling all the hair over to this corner and another pulling everything over to this corner. So now everything gets pulled over to this corner of the head. I find my guide from behind and repeat, pulling everything straight up, even the hair on the sides here, pulling it up, I'm establishing my square, my box. It's imaginary, but it's there. All right, now we're going to repeat that on the other side. Then we're gonna add a little bit of surf tonic and then we're gonna get blow drying. Now, not every customer or client or patron is going to be using a blow dryer at home. Most of the time they're like, dude, I can't do that at home. And I'm like, well, why? You don't have a blow dryer? Yeah, well, you got a woman in that house somewhere that has a blow dryer. If not, there are ways of getting around it. What I like to tell people is put a little bit of product in your hair, style it the way you want. Let it dry naturally with the product in it. Once you're done, put a brush, once it's done drying, put a brush and a comb through it, break up that product and boom, nice style, no blow dryer, and he loves his haircut. Now, us as stylists or barbers, we should be giving them great haircuts that they don't need to blow dry their hair with. But for us to do that, we have to blow dry the hair. All right. So now we have a nice shape. I love the length up top. I just want to do a little bit of cross-checking. So cross-checking, I'm going to pull the hair straight up. Okay. And knock off the little triangle right in the middle. Okay, we already knocked off our corners here and here. We're just making sure that we're nice and square still at the top and throughout the back. Awesome. Now, before I go ahead and move into blow drying, I wanna, while his scalp is still moist, I wanna go ahead and razor that line in. Now, when I raise it a line in, I want to be able to see where I'm going and I want it to be natural for him. I don't want to force it. So by being natural for this mannequin or Willie here, we're going to use his calic, which is right here, and it's swirling this way. Okay, we're going to use his calic, find that natural parting to his head and go straight towards his hairline, okay? Make it nice and straight, okay? His hair is moist. I have my razor and I'm just going to, one little line on the, on the mannequin, one little line. Now with partings, hard partings, it is all depend on the density of the hair, okay? 
So if the hair is very fine, it should be a very fine line. If it's very thick, then make it a little bit thicker, but don't make it a highway or a turnpike. All right, I think I'm ready to blow dry now. So back to another new product of ours, Surf Tonic. It's not the newest, but it has come out recently. Okay, it's like a sea salt spray. So it's going to give you texture. Um, it's going to give you a little bit of grit, but one of my favorite parts is it's matte finish. Um, my area, a lot of people love the matte finish um, hair. So it is a new pump. It does lock, so you don't lose anything while you're traveling. Okay, you just spin it to the side here. And I just like doing a few pumps, okay? This one does not have a fragrance, so he's not going to be asking you, what are you putting that smell in my hair for, okay? But it does help out nicely with the blow dry, okay? Now, when I blow dry, you're not going to be able to hear me because it does get a little loud. So I'm going to go over my steps. Step one. My blow dryer is going to be on medium heat and I'm going to have it on full power. Okay. Step two, I'm going to work the crown area straight down. I want the crown as flat as possible. Okay. So naturally I'm just going to blow dry it in its natural state. Second, I'm going to blow dry his sides and his front a little bit. I'm going to leave it moist in here. Third, I'm going to focus on his parting, okay? This is how I really keep my scumbag boogies real nice and tight with their parting. It's blow drying that separately. And if they're blow drying at home, I let them know to blow dry the part first for themselves, okay? But me in the chair, I'm gonna work the back first, work the side, and then focus on his parting. And then we'll worry about putting some volume in the front here. Now, I'm not going to use a brush. I want real nice texture and natural texture with him. So I'm not going to use a brush. I'm just going to use my fingers. And I'm putting my nozzle as close to his scalp as I can. The reason I want to do that is I want to blow dry it real nice and fast.
Dave, tell us again why you decided to use your hands instead of a brush. I'm sorry, Curtis, I didn't hear you. Tell us again why you decided to use your hands over your brush. Because I want more of a natural look to it, okay? I'm not trying to straighten the hair out as perfectly as I can, which you can do with a vent brush or a Denman brush. Um, I like to use my fingers for more of that natural flow. And in the front here, I want to make it a little bit more curly textured by scrunching it up here. Um, just to give it a little bit more fun feeling to it. More lived in. It's a little hard for customers to use a, a blow dryer and a comb or a brush at home. So it's a little bit easier for them to be able to use their hands. And if they can see me using my hands, they know it'll be a little bit easier. And you're scrunching more with your hands there in the front? Scrunching more with my hands here. One, so I can lift up and pull some volume out, but also so I can get this nice little wavy texture I got going on here. Awesome. As everybody knows, mannequin's hair is pretty straight, so you got to find ways to manipulate it to uh, give it a little bit of extra fun on it. So now we have a nice blow-dried hair, but as we can see, Still needs a little bit of work. Needs to clean up this weight line back here. Okay, um, I still want to texture in his hair a little bit more. Um, have it looked a little bit more uh, surfery, but still scumbag boogie. Okay. So how I'm going to do that, I'm going to grab a pair of blending shears and a wide tooth comb. And the reason I say wide tooth comb is because we want the texturing part to be most natural. So you don't want a lot of tension on it. Now with my blending shears, I'm not so much going into, I'm not going into the roots at all. Okay, I'm going right on the ends. And what these are doing for me is kind of sculpting the shape that I've been trying to achieve the whole time. So I'm just going to follow the haircut where I feel it should lay. Pull everything out nice and square. And just skimming over the parts of the haircut. Kind of like a uh, imaginary line that we're following. If I were to have like a imaginary um, sculpt of his haircut and that's how I want it to look. That's how I want my blending shears to be moving around his head. But I don't want to get blender happy. You don't want to stay in one area too, too much because then you'll get too much of a, a clipper look, almost like a buzz cut. You don't want that. Um, you could also texturize the hair too much to where it stands up too much. Okay, you don't want short hair holding up long hair. That is also another reason we're just skimming the edges and blending everything nice and even. Now you see you have this nice even blend. No more weight. Now I'm working in the back here. And when I'm working in the back, I like doing diagonal sections with my comb. The reason I like diagonal sections with my comb, diagonal lines make everything a little softer and makes it so you don't get harsh horizontal or vertical lines. Now, just skimming over it in the shape that I want. You can see our previous guy behind everything closest to us. That's why we work, besides keeping ourselves comfortable, that's why we work square in front of our section. Now moving to the other side, I repeat everything that I just did. One side to the other is always repeated repetition. Now you am seeing that I'm 
combing everything to natural fall. If it doesn't blend at natural fall, it's going to be hard for them to style at home. And that's not what we want. Blend that weight line out. Following the shape. Now, the surf tonic gave us a little bit of volume. Didn't give us as much volume as like a grooming tonic, um, which is probably Ruzel's number one used behind the chair for blow drying, his Ruzel grooming tonic. Um, but it did give us a nice texture feel to the hair. Almost felt, felt like he was at the beach all day, which... I know for myself, the salt water or salt texture really gives me a nice textured pompadour. Blending all that weight out, getting that delay nice and blended in the back here. And you see we have no heavy weight line because of the blending shears. Maybe right here a little bit, but we can always go back over it. Okay, now we have that nice crown sitting nice and smooth down towards the occipital. Now the top here. It's gonna go up. And once again, this is for structure or sculpting the hair. So I'm not really pulling the hair in an area I don't want it to cut. I'm pulling the hair up and just skimming the edges to make sure my shape is almost perfect. And pull it up. We're almost finished with the shears. Go ahead and finish tapering them and we'll put our finished product in and do a little styling. Sweet. Awesome. Quick little taper. And the side burns here. Now, in a lot of barber shops or salons, people don't finish with a product. They just let them leave in the style that they came in with or the style that the haircut finished with. But for me, I like letting them finish with the product that I'm going to be sending them home with so that they know how it works. But another thing is if they're like, well, I want to try all the products. Great, try all the products. But we also have a nice little sizing system where it goes from piglet to hog. So if the lover of one, sell them a hog. If they're confused about which ones they get, sell them some piglets. Clean up around his hair, his ear here. part on his hair make him comfortable now our finishing product for our last style is matte styling paste it is one of our newer products it's on the lighter side of the hold but it gives a nice matte finish and texture look used about a dime size maybe a quarter size rubbed it in nice Focus on his visual areas, the front, the part, the sides. Work it in from roots to ends.
and you have your scumbag boogie. Awesome. Great job, Dave. Nice textured razor part. Scumbag boogie. Finished. Awesome. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a good spin for us, Dave. And a little spin. All right. Very nice. I love that texture. Oh, yeah. The styling paste is really nice. I've really been enjoying working with it. It's not as thick as our pomades, but it does the job like our pomades. Cool, Dave. But I want to thank everybody for watching. Well, let's uh, let's get you a face shot, and we'll say uh, thank you, too, for joining us. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, guys. I think uh, the recording was much better this time, guys. I want to thank Dave for coming out today. I want to thank everybody for joining us today as well. And I want to welcome and let everybody know that on Monday, May 25th, that's right, we will not be doing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday anymore. We will only be doing Monday Lives. So next Monday in Spanish, we have Diego Rodriguez from Colombia joining us again. I hope everybody had a wonderful time today. I enjoyed watching Dave. Dave's a great hair cutter and a wonderful educator. And I hope everybody will tune in on Monday, May 25th for Diego in Spanish. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you again on Monday.